Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and today you're watching the first video of the Java Intermediate Tutorials. This will be an introduction to graphical user interfaces, or GUI for short. We'll be creating your average everyday window that you see when you're working on your computer. For that we make use of a library that's already built into Java, so don't worry you don't have to download or install anything. This library goes by the name of Swing. Well, let's start by creating our foundation. What we need first is a so-called JFrame. And like always, we have to import it first. There we go. So here we created a JFrame instance, which goes by the name of Frame. The constructor is pretty handy, because it allows us to specify a display name for the window right away. Of course, there are also ways to change the display name later on. Now technically the window is already there, but there are a few parameters that we can and should manipulate. Let's start by giving our window a size. Using the setSize method of a JFrame, we can specify the width and height in pixels. The first parameter, 300 in this case, gives our window a width of 300 pixels. The second parameter sets its height to 200 pixels. Now it's time to set its location. Again, this method takes two parameters. The first one determines its position on the x-axis, while the second one determines its position on the y-axis. These coordinates are relative to your desktop screen. I'll be talking a bit more about coordinates in a minute. Now the last thing we need to do is to make our window actually visible. Yes, it may seem silly to you, but by default JFrames are invisible. So let's go ahead and take a look at the awesome window we have so far. Oh, there it is. You can see its title is My Awesome Window, just like we specified. And as you can see, it comes with a common decoration of your operating system. So we can minimize it, maximize it and close it without having to write any code ourselves. Now as great as our window may be, I'm getting kinda tired of looking at it. So let's close it. But wait a second. Keen eyes might notice something strange. See this symbol right here? It's red, meaning that our program is still running. Even though we closed the window, we technically haven't terminated the program. Fortunately for us, there's a quick way to fix this. Terminate this here first, and add the following line to your code. Set default close operation to JFrame exit on close. So now when we close the window, we actually exit the program as well, which is what we want. Let's take a closer look at this. As you can see, exit on close is written in all capital letters, which means that it's a constant. The JFrame class has a lot of constants, which really are just integers. These integers have been given purposeful names, so we can describe actions using numbers. Now the reason why we can simply access this constant from anywhere in our program is because it is a static member of the JFrame class. We will talk more about static members in the future. Now this is all well and good and we have a functional window. But hey, of course we want to fill it with some content. Before we do that though, let me give you a brief pointer about coordinate systems in computer programming. Your typical coordinate system works like this. You have the x-axis, which goes from left to right, and the y-axis, which goes from bottom to top. If we wanted to draw a line from 0, 0 to 1, 1, it would look like this. However, in Java, it would look like this. As you can see, in computer programming, the y-axis gets flipped. Now, there may be certain exceptions to this rule, but in general, you can say that in computer programming, the y-axis goes from top to bottom. Now, this is a really simple concept, but of course, it takes some time getting used to. Anyway, back to our window. We are now going to display some text inside of our window. For that, we will make use of a class called JLabel. Again, import it first. 
and just like our window, we can specify a text inside the constructor. If you wanted to change this text, you can use the following method. It's pretty straightforward how these classes work. All you have to do is create an instance, and then you have access to a wide range of parameters. So let's give this label a size and a location as well. Now I typed in 100 by 100 pixels in here, but that won't mean that it will actually be that size. I will show you what I mean by that in just a second. Let's give it a location first. Now remember, these coordinates will be relative to the frame that we added to. So it won't be on the top left of your desktop screen, but on the top left of the window. And let's do just that. JFrips can take in various objects such as labels, buttons and other things. For that, all you have to do is call its add method and put in the component that you would like. If we now go ahead and run our program, you can see that our window now displays our label. You are awesome. This is quite the motivational window we got here. But still, something is odd about this. We set its location to be at 50 and 50, and this right here is more like 0 and 100. Well, the reason for that is simple. JFrames always come with a default layout in which they put their components. So right now, our set size and set location for the label had no effect whatsoever. There are a lot of different layouts for different purposes, and we will explore them in the future. But for now, we don't want any layout at all. So let's go ahead and say just that. If we set the layout to null, we will get our desired effect. Let's run this program again. Now this is a bit closer to what we had in mind, but still not perfect. The text is kind of sliced off as well. This is because now we are not using any layouts anymore and we have to take care of everything ourselves. Let's start with the set size method of the label. Like I said before, it doesn't affect the actual text size. What it does is, it creates a box in which the text is displayed in. So here, the text you're awesome is contained within an invisible box which has the size of 100 and 100. We're doing okay with the height, but the width is a little short, so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's give it 150 in width, and we can shorten the height a little bit. Let's say 40. Run the program again. Now this is exactly what we wanted. The bounding box of our label starts at 5050, and the text is displayed at its full length. Now typically you always want to use a layout unless you have a very special case. But for now, this is all the time I've got. If you want to keep track of what's happening on this channel, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.